What does earwax color tells about your health? The color of your earwax is a reflection of your health status. Disclaimer. This article is for informational purposes only. It is not intended to constitute or be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Discover some wonderfully disgusting facts about wet and dry earwax. Plus, find out what the color of earwax says about your health, ethnicity, and body odor. Many people believe earwax, or cerumen, is a sign of poor hygiene when, in fact, it serves an important purpose in maintaining ear health. This video, we will explain why do we have earwax, the different colors of our earwax and what it implies. Keep on watching and don't forget to click the subscribe button. Turn on notifications to join and healthify your life. What is earwax for? Earwax traps dirt and dust, acts as a natural moisturizer and protects the inner ear from germs and infection. Much like flypaper traps insects. In fact, individuals with too little earwax are more likely to experience problems such as itchiness and flaking skin in the ear canal. It acts as an insect repellent. The smell of earwax keeps bugs away, while the stickiness traps those that accidentally venture inside. What is earwax made of? Earwax is produced in the outer part of the ear canal, not deep inside the ear. Earwax is made up of dead skin cells and hair that is combined with the discharge from two different glands. Two main types of earwax. There are two primary types of earwax, wet and dry. Wet cerumen has a lot more lipids, which make it thick and sticky. It is more normal in European and Africans' descent. Dry cerumen is flaky and is generally normal in Eastern Asian populations. What color should earwax be? White and gray earwax, dry. Dry cerumen is the most widely recognized reason for white earwax, which comes out in flakes. Nonetheless, Sometimes, it can also be a sign of infection or atopic dermatitis or eczema. Consult a doctor if you have white or gray earwax flakes with itchiness, inflammation, and pain. White yellow green earwax, wet. Wet, light yellow or white earwax could demonstrate that there is pus in your ear canal. This pale discharge is a warning signal from your immune system that you need to consult a doctor. Discharge in the ear is frequently an indication of an ear infection. Yellow-orange earwax. This is typical wet earwax, a genetic trait that you can do nothing about. Remember to clean your ears routinely to keep away from an impaction. Indications of earwax blockage include an earache, hearing challenges, and irritation. Red earwax. Bright streaks of red earwax is a sign of bleeding. There are several reasons for blood in earwax. It could be a superficial injury to the skin, or something more serious like an infection, a ruptured eardrum, or head trauma. Consult a doctor. Reddish-brown or dark red earwax is an indication of old cerumen that has developed up in your ear canal. It's not uncommon, especially if your body produces lots of earwax. Try cleaning your ears more often to keep the earwax under control. Brown and black earwax. Dark earwax is a sign of oxidized earwax. Basically, black earwax has been in your ear too long. Exposure to oxygen and natural bacterial fermentation has tinted the honey-colored cerumen. Certain individuals are more inclined to the overproduction of earwax and may need to clean their ears more often to avoid dark earwax. Ears are self-cleaning. When it comes to proper hygiene, ear experts say the advice is simple. Leave your ears alone. While the glands in your ears consistently make new earwax, the ears have self-cleaning components and typically clean themselves. Inserting Q-tips or other pointed objects into your ears puts you at danger for more problems, including damaging your ear canal or eardrum, or pushing earwax deeper inside causing it to build up and become impacted. If you can see earwax in the outer ear or outside the hole, 
it's fine to wipe it with a tissue. However, when you go into the ear canal, considers it risky. It's best to leave that to a healthcare professional who has the instruments to look inside your ear and remove eliminate earwax securely. Try not to remove earwax except it's problematic. In fact, when you make a habit of removing earwax, that conveys a message to your body to make more, creating an excess which can interfere with hearing. Put you at more serious danger for developing ear infections and other complications. Homemade Ear Wash Solution Mix 2 thirds cup white vinegar with 1 third cup isopropyl alcohol or also called rubbing alcohol. Keep it in a soft-sided squeeze bottle with a small, rounded tip. A good choice would be the kind of small squirt bottle that contains saline for contact lens care. Take the old label off the bottle or write, ear wash bottle, on it. Gently squirt the mixture in your ear one or more times a day. Use it after you shower or swim. Vinegar helps control germ growth by keeping your inner ear slightly acidic. Rubbing alcohol helps dry your ear. If the solution burns or causes discomfort, you can make it with more rubbing alcohol. Some patients find this works better. Once your ears are clean, you can use mineral oil weekly or monthly to help soften earwax. Mineral oil can be found in drugstores and grocery stores with other laxatives. If you aren't successful with ear irrigation after a couple tries, contact your primary care provider or otolaryngology to schedule an appointment. This is especially true if notice any of these signs, which could indicate an injury or infection. Bleeding from either ear, dizziness, ringing in your ear, sore or aching ear, stabbing pain, drainage that is colored white, green, red, thick or foul smelling, decreased hearing, itching, fever of 101 degrees Fahrenheit or higher. How to clean your ears. While your ears are self-cleaning, there are a few things you can do to keep them clean and free of excess debris. Wash your ears using a warm, soapy washcloth. Letting warm water from your daily shower run into your ears every so often is probably enough to soften and loosen excess earwax. If you wear hearing aids, make sure you clean them properly. If you're older than 60, have your hearing evaluated periodically by a hearing healthcare professional. See a doctor immediately if your home treatments don't help or if you experience sudden hearing loss, pain or bleeding. 4 Things You Should Never Do To Your Ears Avoid These 4 Hazardous Practices Number 1. Ear Candling Number 2. Using Cotton Swabs To Clean Your Ears Number 3. Listening To Exceedingly Loud Music Number 4. Disregarding The Signs Of Hearing Loss Finally, we have the distressing fact that individuals tend to wait almost 10 years from the beginning of symptoms before searching for help for their hearing loss. Hopefully this video has answered a couple of questions you might have had. Hit the like button and click the subscribe to join us in Healthifying Life.